Ever since making his debut alongside Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins, it was clear that Roman Reigns had a great future ahead of him. The big dog had the raw power and in-ring charisma ingrained in his psyche to become the next big main eventer for the WWE. And while there was a pretty noticeable learning curve for him as he rose to the top of the roster, today Roman Reigns stands as undeniably the biggest name in pro wrestling. Following his heel turn at the 2020 SummerSlam event, it felt like the cage that had trapped Roman for nearly a decade had been broken wide open. No longer was he an unnatural hero, failing to get the WWE Universe behind him. Now, Roman is just an unstoppable juggernaut in WWE. And that's all thanks to the combination of his role as the leader of the bloodline and his current run as the WWE Undisputed Universal Champion. With him dominating SmackDown as we head into WrestleMania 39, let us take a look back at Roman Reigns and his legendary title reign. Following the SummerSlam main event pitting Braun Strowman against the fiend Bray Wyatt, Roman decided to make his return to the company by attacking these two titans of the pro wrestling industry. The fans were left confused, wondering if Roman's return meant that he would be a heroic giant killer or an evil force that would dominate the roster. Well, that will be answered soon enough as Roman aligned himself with the advocate of yet another dominating heel monster, Paul Heyman. And with Paul Heyman having all the right backstage connections, Paul's new client would be inserted into a triple threat match for the Universal Championship against Braun Strowman and Bray Wyatt. Unsurprisingly, Roman Reigns walked out of that payback pay-per-view holding the gold. But after defeating these massive men in Braun and Bray, Roman's reign as Universal Champion would be challenged by a very unsuspecting name. After winning a number one contenders match on SmackDown, it would be Jey Uso as his cousin's first challenger. Of course, the idea of Jey challenging any world championship seemed like an impossibility with his status as a tag team specialist alongside his brother Jimmy. Nonetheless, Jey was the one challenging Roman in his family implosion at Clash of Champions. However, despite their family connection, Jay found himself a victim to Roman. While Jay proved to be a man of heart and endurance, Roman would continuously tear his cousin apart until Jimmy Uso would hobble out on an injured knee and throw in the towel on his brother's behalf, giving Roman the victory. But Jay's performance proved to the WWE that he was much more than just another tag team guy. So when Jay approached Roman with the prospect of a rematch, Roman couldn't help but agree. And after a quick title defense against Braun Strowman, Roman would go on to the Hell in a Cell event to face off against his cousin once again. However, if Jay thought it was difficult before, then he would be in for a major surprise as their rematch would be contested in an I Quit match all inside of the Hell in a Cell structure. If Jay wins, he leaves as champion. If he loses, then he must follow Roman's orders and address him as the tribal chief, which he would do following this event as Roman would beat down the injured Jimmy Uso right in front of his brother until Jay would finally hand his cousin another victory by uttering the words, I quit. Reigns had fully transformed. Just a year prior, Roman was playing the role of sympathetic hero. Now he was the leader on his island of relevancy using Paul Heyman and the Uso brothers to do his bidding. The twisted mob boss of WWE will continue to dominate SmackDown at this point. At Survivor Series, Roman would defeat the WWE champion Drew McIntyre in a match pitting the top champions of Raw and SmackDown against each other. That is, before promptly entering a title program with the former Universal Champion Kevin Owens. During this feud with the prize fighter, Roman would see himself just barely hold on to his title because at the 2020 TLC event, Roman successfully defended his championship via the assistance of Jey Uso. But Kevin wasn't going to take his loss lying down, so on the Christmas edition of SmackDown, Roman would once again find himself tangled up in a battle against Kevin Owens. This time though, their fight would take place inside of a steel cage. And while Owens may have thought that the added cage structure would help him in his quest to become champion, all it did was prolong the inevitable as Jey Uso would once again help Roman to retain his championship by handcuffing Kevin Owens to the cage structure itself. Twice now, Kevin was screwed out of the Universal Championship, so he decided to settle it once and for all at the Royal Rumble event. However, Roman would still find himself on the receiving end of a victory with Paul Heyman proving to be a distraction for Owens. And while Kevin desperately wanted another shot at Roman, he would have to wait quite some time before getting it as the Tribal Chief would look toward the WrestleMania main event pitting himself against Daniel Bryan and the 2021 Royal Rumble winner, Edge. After multiple defenses against Daniel Bryan at the Elimination Chamber and Fastlane events, Bryan would still find himself in the main event of WrestleMania after being screwed over in his previous battles. 
Rumbles. Of course, Edge's position in the match was already guaranteed with his Royal Rumble victory, so now Roman was forced to prepare himself for a high-stakes triple threat contest against two of the best wrestlers in WWE history. But after a 22-minute affair, Roman would showcase his dominance by stacking Brian and Edge on top of each other with a memorable pinfall victory over the two. If you needed a reminder that Roman was the top star in the WWE, look no further than the image of Roman stacking the lifeless bodies of Brian and Edge in this match, but Brian was still not convinced. A victory over the Universal Champion meant too much to him, so Brian would risk it all in a match against him on SmackDown. In a championship versus career match, Daniel Bryan would find himself passing out to Roman's signature guillotine chokehold, giving up his time under the WWE umbrella. And while Daniel would find himself making waves soon after this in All Elite Wrestling, Roman Reigns would continue to be proven unstoppable during his run as champion. At WrestleMania Backlash, Cesaro would step up to the Tribal Chief, only to pass out in the guillotine like Daniel Bryan before him. On the June 18th episode of SmackDown, Roman would prove too much for Rey Mysterio. Not even the returning Edge could defeat him at the Money in the Bank event, finally getting a one-on-one -on -one shot at the gold, only for him to fall victim to a spear by the champion. And after conquering all the biggest names on SmackDown, many people were left wondering where exactly the Tribal Chief would go from here, but those fans did not have to wait for long because following his victory against Edge, Roman would meet his biggest test yet as Universal Champion. The iconic trumpets, the bright colors, and the thunderous reaction of the WWE fans in attendance signaled the arrival of John Cena back to the WWE. Roman Reigns, the biggest bad guy in the WWE, would face off against the returning hero at SummerSlam. However, Cena would soon learn that Roman Reigns is not the same man that he fought once before back in 2017. No, back then, Roman was still trying to find his footing, his promo skills were mixed to say the least, and the fans would rather take a cheese grater to the forehead than see Roman Reigns' main event. But nowadays, this feud took place in 2021. Roman would prove just how much he's grown. Roman Reigns was sprinting towards superstardom as Cena was tripping over himself and trying to keep up. And at SummerSlam, Roman would once again defeat Big Match John in front of a packed crowd. Immediately after the match though, Reigns would be confronted by an old rival as a returning Brock Lesnar would make his presence known. However, this meeting was only used as a tease for a future match down the line. For now, Reigns had his hands full with the next challenger, Finn Balor. With the assistance of a low blow by Roman, Balor would end up losing his chance at glory on the September 3rd episode of SmackDown. However, like Kevin Owens before him, Finn would not let this blatant cheating slide, so Balor would once again challenge for the Universal Championship in an Extreme Rules match. Balor even went all out in this match, bringing back his demon persona for the big fight. The demon even looked to have the match won with him holding Roman off long enough to climb to the top rope for the coup de grace, but then Balor's chances would crash down almost as hard as his face crashed down into the mat. Right before he could hit the move, the top turnbuckle seemed to explode off with Finn falling down hard to the mat. Dazed and confused, Balor would get back up to his feet only to be met with a spear as the Tribal Chief would retain his championship. But after arguably one of the worst moments during his reign as champion, the two would go their separate ways. Balor would head off to Raw and Roman would enter the belly of the beast incarnate. Yes, at the Crown Jewel event in October, Roman would find himself squaring up against Brock Lesnar in their fifth singles match throughout their careers. And while this match would bore most fans in prior years, it's fair to say that this rendition of their battle had a lot more intrigue by the WWE Universe than usual. This time, Brock was taking on a newer, darker version of his rival, and while the fight was a hard-hitting affair between the two competitors, Roman would once again find himself on the receiving end of a victory as the Usos would interfere in the match and cost Brock the title. However, Brock was still clamoring for a shot at Roman, so when Roman was set to defend his title against Sami Zayn on SmackDown a few weeks later, Lesnar made sure that Sami would be unfit to compete with a brutal brutal attack moments before the bell. Of course, Roman would defeat Sammy in only a few seconds, all to the joy of Lesnar, and as the match was scheduled at the day one pay-per-view, Brock was set to go one-on-one -on -one with Roman Reigns once again. 
Sadly though, the match would never happen. Before the show, Roman was tested positive for COVID-19 and was rightfully pulled from the show, leaving Brock with only one other option. He arrived at the show, now set to battle in a fatal five-way match for the WWE Championship with Seth Rollins, Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, and the WWE Champion Big E suffering a loss as Brock Lesnar would get his hand raised in victory as the new WWE Champion. So what happened to Roman Reigns following this show? Well, due to the lack of a match between himself and the Beast, Roman's reign would continue on as he reached a major milestone in his career. Roman had just surpassed 503 days as Universal Champion, making his reign the longest in the title's history. An impressive feat to be sure, and one that would continue to drive the WWE roster as the questions started piling up. Who will be the man to defeat Roman? Who will end the record-shattering reign? Well, Seth Rollins looked to be the man as Roman's next challenger and would battle him at the 2022 Royal Rumble event. Yes, two-thirds of the Shield looked to wage war once again in the squared circle, and while their buddy Dean was off bleeding buckets in AEW, Seth would look to use his history in the Shield as a way to get into Roman's head. He entered the match sporting the signature black attire of the Shield as he looked for the old version of his former friend. The one that would dominate the WWE alongside Seth and Dean. The one that won tag team titles with him. But that version of Roman, that version was long gone at this point. And Seth learned that the hard way as Roman would lock in the guillotine. However, even though Seth was able to reach the ropes, Roman would choose not to let go of the hold, screaming he deserves this over and over again. Roman would lose the match by disqualification as Seth was left unconscious in his arms. As we all know though, due to this loss being by disqualification, Roman still left the event as the Universal Champion. Later that night though, another wrinkle would be added to Roman's feud with Lesnar. During the WWE Championship match between Brock Lesnar and Bobby Lashley, Roman would interfere by reuniting with Heyman and helping Lashley retain the championship, and helping Lashley regain the championship. But the shock surrounding Brock Lesnar would not stop on this night as he would surprisingly enter the Royal Rumble match to win the whole thing and punch his ticket to WrestleMania 38. Of course, Brock's anger would force him to choose his opponent the Raw after as he declared that he will be challenging for the Universal Championship so he could finally get his hands on the Tribal Chief. That is, if Roman could remain champion until WrestleMania. But you see, Roman would find himself pretty busy in the build-up to WrestleMania as another seemingly unstoppable force in the form of Goldberg would challenge him for the Universal title. Yes, after their match was cancelled a few years ago due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Roman and Goldberg would finally square off for the Universal Championship. In this clash between generations, Roman would once again prove his dominance by defeating Goldberg and retaining the title. But now the story between Brock and Roman can finally continue at WrestleMania 38. One of the biggest matches in either man's history would take place with the two battling each other to see who would leave with both Universal and WWE titles now that Brock had regained the title at Elimination Chamber. After all was said and done, Roman would find himself leaving the event as the first superstar to hold both the WWE Championship and the Universal Championship simultaneously. Reigns was unstoppable around this time, now dubbing himself the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. He had seemingly conquered the biggest names in the WWE, even taking the legacy left behind by Brock as the unstoppable monster of the company. However, in sharp contrast was Sami Zayn. While Roman Reigns solidified himself as the top performer in the company at WrestleMania, Sami Zayn battled a losing effort against Johnny Knoxville. Yes, the once former NXT champion was defeated by the guy from Jackass. This is meant as no disrespect to Knoxville, but it was felt by many fans at this point that Zayn should be positioned in a more prominent role given how talented he was, and Zayn felt the same too. So when he saw the Bloodline faction standing at the top of WWE, he decided to try his best to join them. He became friends with Jimmy Uso at first, slowly gaining the trust of the rest of the faction. But while we'll touch more on Zayn's story in a little bit, one must be wondering what Roman was doing around this time as champion. Well, between the story building with Sami Zayn and Roman's mini feuds with the likes of RK Bro and Drew McIntyre, Roman would also take this opportunity to pick and choose his battles in the ring. From WrestleMania to SummerSlam, Roman would sparingly compete in the ring, not even defending his titles on any pay-per-views until SummerSlam. On the June 17th episode of SmackDown, Reigns would find himself in a rare title match though as he defeated Riddle. That is, before the familiar face of Brock Lesnar would emerge, and then not satisfied with his loss to Roman at WrestleMania, Brock returned with one final challenge for the Tribal Chief. At SummerSlam, Brock Lesnar took on Roman Reigns in a last man standing match. 
While many fans expected a hard-hitting affair typical of previous Brock and Roman matches, those same fans would be shocked to see just how different it was to any other match in WWE history. Brock would leave the arena stunned as he drove down to the ring on a tractor. Yeah, you heard me, a tractor. He then, even more surprisingly, decided to destroy the ring during the match with that very same tractor, and honestly, it's one of the most chaotic and bizarre matches in WWE history in the best way possible. But after all the carnage, Roman still found himself staring down at Brock Lesnar as the championship reign would continue. Sure, he had help from the bloodline, but Roman still had to fight like hell with the most unpredictable obstacles thrown his way. And while Roman walked out of SummerSlam as the winner, he still had to prepare for his next challenger because you see Roman's next defense would take place at Clash at the Castle and he knew he was walking into enemy territory. It was the first WWE UK pay-per-view in almost 20 years and Roman was going up against the beloved narrative representative Drew McIntyre. Another man with a victory over Brock Lesnar, Drew McIntyre had been built up as one of the top players in WWE by this point, and many fans were convinced that Drew could be the guy to defeat Roman. He had the in-ring skills, the entertaining promos, and the hometown crowd all on his side. But there's no way he could have predicted Roman's ace in the hole. After Drew hit his final claymore of the match, he went to cover Roman. And right as the referee started the count, he would be interrupted by a debuting Solo Sokoa, who pulled him out of the ring just before he could declare Drew as the new champion. Roman then took advantage of the distraction, spearing Drew McIntyre to retain his titles before declaring that Solo was the newest member of the Bloodline. The Bloodline faction was growing, as Solo joined just before Sami Zayn was also officially made a member of the group, gaining the title of Honorary Oos. But while members like Jey Uso would continue to not trust Sami during his time in the Bloodline, Sami would soon prove himself as trustworthy because after Roman would successfully defend his title against Logan Paul at Crown Jewel following Clash of the Castle, Sami Zayn would be fully tested at Survivor Series in War Games. The Bloodline would all take part in the newly returned match type with Zayn proving his loyalty by helping them win against the Brawling Brutes, Drew McIntyre, and notably Sami's best friend, Kevin Owens. Finally, Sammy had the trust of everyone in the group, including Jey Uso, the one man who was against Sammy joining the Bloodline to begin with. The Bloodline story would continue to dominate programming as Sammy's tale in the faction continued to build and build. One week, Sammy would help the Bloodline win. The next week, Sammy would cost them a victory. While Sammy proclaimed his allegiance to the faction, it was still unclear exactly where he lied. Roman would even openly exclaim his distrust in Sammy, not sure whether Zayn was on his side or not. But Roman still had one final test for the honorary ooze. At the Royal Rumble event in 2023, Roman would once again defend his title against Sammy's best friend, Kevin Owens. And throughout the match, it was hard not to keep your eyes off of Sammy. His facial expressions would change rapidly depending on who was winning, and it was unclear where Sammy's allegiances lied. But then, following the match and another successful retention for Roman, the bloodline would tear Kevin apart. He was a victim to an intense beating, all while Sammy was forced to watch. And when Roman finally gave Sammy a chair to join in on the beatdown, Sammy shocked the world as he used it. But he didn't use it on Kevin, no. Instead, he decided to attack Roman before finding himself getting beaten down by the now betrayed champion. Notably though, Jey Uso would walk away from the situation, choosing not to join in on the attack. The bloodline was now in despair, and it was all due to the actions of Sami Zayn. And at the Elimination Chamber, Sami Zayn would get his shot against Roman. After months of squeezing himself into the bloodline, Zayn would finally end up betraying Roman and getting a shot at the WWE Undisputed Universal Championship. However, despite the Montreal crowd pulling for their hometown hero, Zayn would fall like so many before him, and while he fought as hard as he could, Zayn failed in defeating Roman Reigns, which many fans, including myself, were very upset about. But now, the stage is set. At WrestleMania 39, Roman Reigns will once again walk in as champion as he faces off against this year's Royal Rumble winner, Cody Rhodes. Reigns has held the title now for over 900 days, defeating the biggest names in the WWE during that time. Daniel Bryan, Kevin Owens, Edge, Goldberg, Brock Lesnar, they've all fallen to the Tribal Chief. And while WrestleMania is just around the corner, with many fans predicting that it's Cody's time in the sun, I wouldn't be so fast to place your bets on him. 
While it's likely that Cody will be the one to defeat Roman, there's still a massive chance that he will be added to the list of names conquered by the tribal chief Roman Reigns. Because after all, Roman's legendary title reign is just that, legendary. He put on some of the most intense matches, he's had some of the best promos of his entire career during this reign, and has been a part of some of the greatest stories in WWE history during his run on top. So if Cody isn't the one to defeat him and Roman does go on to surpass 1,000 days as champion, then you really have to wonder what's next for Roman's iconic run as champion. And you have to wonder who, if anyone, will be able to knock the tribal chief off the top as head of the table.